Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we open up old school magic because it is a Sunday. That means I'm going to do what I love to do most, that is open my Magic the Gathering post. And um, I'm kind of excited because I have a letter here from Kylie and let me get the camera zooming in properly. Kylie and Jackie. And uh, this is unexpected stuff. I don't know what's in here. So I'm really looking forward to that. But I'm going to Save this one for last. I know Kylie, she's a, a patron of the channel and a, a great magic player as well. She builds great decks. But I'm first gonna open up this. I think in here we have some cards for my Renaissance collection. If you follow my mail days, you probably know what I'm talking about. So it is a German and French uh, version of Chronicles a little bit. The cool thing about Renaissance is that it's all black bordered. So here we're gonna Open it up. There we see the Pradesh Gypsies. Let me get the sellotape off right here. Oh, can I, can I get it to work? Yes, yes I can. Boom, so there are quite a lot of cards as you can see. Um, these cards are not too expensive and um, that's always what I like. That means it's quite easy to kind of collect them to get it together. Obviously there are some expensive cards in the Renaissance series. So here we got some cards and here we've got some cards. Let's just start with this one. So the Pradesh Gypsies, you can tap it to give target creature minus two minus oh and it's a one one for three mana. So pretty expensive, doesn't see a lot of play. Then we've got Psionic Entity it's kind of like a super Timmy, right? One blue and four, you can tap it. It deals two damage to any target, but also three damage to itself. These are German cards, by the way. So it basically kills itself, but if you can find a way to pump it, maybe with a holy armor or a holy strength, you know, uh, it doesn't die. Or maybe if you put a regeneration shield on it or something. Yeah, and here we've got, ah, uh, this is the, um, I forgot the name, but it's an anti-card. Look at that casting cost. But the art is really cool. Let's just kind of take a moment to take that art in here. Beautiful artwork. Who's the artist again? Mark Tedden, makes sense. A lot of stuff tends to happen in his art, which I like. Then we've got the Shape Shifter. So I now believe I have this card in French and in German. That's pretty cool. Then we've got Tannis' Wand. It's, it's basically in Dwarven Warriors on a stick, so you can pay two and tap, and you can make target creature with power two or less unblockable, and after that you can still pump it. So you can give it unblockable, like a Dragon Whelp, for example, and then you can pump the Whelp and it's still unblockable. It, and the problem with this card is the casting cost, right? 40 cast and two to use. Pretty, pretty steep. And then we've got Thomas's Weaponry. This is kind of the first equipment cards you could say to to uh, cast two and tap to use to give target creature plus one plus one and if you want to you can keep it tapped it's a card that doesn't see a lot of play um again it doesn't do that much for the amount of mana but i i love the idea that you know this is the start of equips and and the way equipment used to work of course uncle is fun three black and one for this classic creature i built a pretty cool EDH deck with Uncle Istvan. There's actually, I believe there's an episode on the channel. I put in a little info card so that you can click there if you want to watch the match if you haven't done so already. It's really, it was surprisingly uh, uh, interesting and diverse to play with a mono black deck. And oh, there we saw the wall of dust already, but we first have the um, Untamed Wilds. So one green and two, beautiful art by Nana Thomas. Really cool. There's so much movement in this art. I really like it and I love the autumn colors. I think it's fantastic. So with, uh, with this card, you can look up any basic land and put it into play. It's a card you don't see often because I feel a lot of people tend to choose um, Ice Storm over Untamed Wilds, but Untamed Wilds, it's got potential. Let me know if you play with it and in what kind of build you've used it. I've, I've used it in a build where I played, I believe, with four Sheevan Dragons. And I also added four Untamed Wilds in that deck. It was uh, it was pretty good. And again, you can look up any basic land. So in a multicolor deck, it's it's quite good. 
Then we have the wall of dust, so a one for wall. Then we've got, oh, the Herd Jackal. That's pretty cool. So this card, uh, one red card from Arabian Nights, a one one, you can tap and then target creature can no longer regenerate. So it takes away the regeneration. So, you know, it's very, it's it's an ability you won't use often, but again, you see set scroll a lot in old school. So maybe it can be handy in a, in a sideboard. Oh, and then of course the uh, two two first striker. Oh, what's it called again? From the dark. So three mana for two two with first strike. Ah, I forgot the name. Land yet yeah, something land. Ah, forgot the name. Anyway, um, pretty pretty uh, interesting art. Let me call it interesting. It's like a big tongue. A giant leech. Land leeches, that's the name, land leeches. There you go. And let's see, what do we have here? Ooh, we got a white border card. Uh, let's first, so here we've got gloom and we have, okay, something, whatever. So gloom, one black and two, and then white, it's an enchantment, and it reads white spells cost three more mana to cast and circles of protection cost three more mana to use. So this card is obviously bought for a sideboard deck that I'm working on currently. Well, not a sideboard deck, but a card for in the sideboard of a deck that I'm working on. A sideboard deck, that would be interesting. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, we got, oh, what's it called again? It's a two six and it's got, if it is blocked or if it blocks green and white creatures, they die, uh, Abomination, it's a two six. Look at that name in German. I'm gonna to try to pronounce it. Schuslichkeit, Schuslichkeit, abomination, Schuslichkeit. With that, with that unique German letter, that B letter, you only see that in the German alphabet. And then we have the bronze tablet, AKA bronze Tafel from antiquities. We've got the, um, uh, what's it called again? It's an 04. Uh, it's um, a mechanical bird. It comes into play with 4 plus 1 plus 0 counter, so it's a 4 4. It's got flying. Every time when it attacks, it loses a counter, and then in your upkeep, you can tap it to refill the counters. Yeah, something, something. It's like a mechanical bird. And then we've got Coral Helmet. So three and discard a card to give target creature plus two plus two until end of turn. So again, I mean, it's just a lot of mana for the ability. If it would be one, for example, it would still be pretty bad because you got to discard a card, but at least, you know, you could do it a few times and make a really big creature, but three is a bit steep. Ooh, yeah. Uh, the, oh, what's it called again? The Nightmare Monster to Horror. Horror something. Schrecken aus dem All. Anyway, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. It's got Erdschlag, which means first strike. And I've got to pay six during my upkeep. Six. That's insane. You see that? Six. Oh, man. And I think if you don't pay it, you take seven damage. Does it also destroy itself? I forgot. But look at that art. It's just super cool art. Trying to zoom in, making sure you can see it properly. Wow, who's the artist? Jesper Mirforce, of course. What a cool card. Um, and then we've got Manticore, two red and two to cast for this two-two flying creature from Legends. Uh, one red and tap, and it can deal one damage to target blocking creature, I believe. I'm just reading it. Oder eine blockenden der Manticore fügt eine Angreifenden oder eine blockenden Kreatur eine Schadespunkt zu. Yes, I think Schadespunkt, one point of damage to a blocking creature. And then we have, ah, of course, um, the land worm, right? This worm is so funny. Seven casting cost, insane. It's got trample. The problem is, because hey, if you pay seven mana for a 5-5, five, five, it's got to have a downside, right? So it's a trampler, which is cool. You don't see that often in white. Uh, but this is the catch. It has to be assigned as a blocker first before it can attack. I just wish they would have made this card, I don't know, just for white or something. I do like the art. 
you can see it's kind of hiding there in the desert, waiting for that moment to kind of snap at this attacker. Very, very cool. Art by Quentin Hoover. Very, very nice. Look, look at the worm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, I've got two of these. Okay. Interesting. No idea why I have two. Because I only need one for my collection. But hey, man, maybe I want to build a deck with these dudes. And then we've got, um, oh yeah, the, the mana, mana, is it mana, no, not mana flare. It says mana collision. Mana clash, that's it. Um, so what you do is it deals one damage to any target. Then you flip a coin. If you win the flip, it does another point of damage and so forth. So you keep flipping uh, until that's done. And actually you, oh, how does it work again? You play it, you flip a coin. If the flip turns out in your favor, you deal one damage to your opponent or any target, then your opponent gets to flip and your opponent can deal one damage to you. And then you get to flip and so forth and so forth until both of you um, have like lost your flips. So then it kind of stops, I think. But what I'll do is I'll put the real card here so you can, so I can read it as well, I guess. So this is the last card. So just a ton of Renaissance cards here. Before I open the other envelope, let me just quickly show you just a ton of Renaissance. Again, this is pretty cheap and uh, I think they look really cool. I really like the coloring and I just love to kind of read the cards in, in a non-English language. I think it's quite, quite interesting. Anyway, qu quite a big stag and then one English unlimited card, the Gloom, that I'm going to use in the sideboard of a deck that I'm building on. And now to continue with the second piece of post. There we go. Really excited. No idea what's in here. So I'm going to open it up. There we go. Really a surprise to get this mail. Maybe it's got something to do with the tournament that we've played. Could be. Like I said, Kylie is a, is a patron of the channel. And I actually made a pretty big trade with her um, with 4th edition and revised. And she added a really cool altered island in there. You know what? I'll, I'll add a little picture where you can see the altered. It's pretty sweet. I'm just going to check if there's no personal information in the on the note before I show it to you. Da, 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 da. Ah, I think I know what this is. I think I know what this is. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Dear Timmy, this is a little thank you from the Scarewood Goblin uh, POD. As always, 4HP was a great tournament and a fun format. Enjoy the critters. Christian, Yoon, Eric, Ishan, Jeff, and Kylie. So these guys, well, I should say girls, boys and girls, were together in the 4 Horsemen Popper tournament group. And I think they just had a lot of fun. I was kind of jealous. So they, they had these cards that they sent to each other. Look at that. And they all signed it. And I think they all have a copy of this, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, oh, it's hard to kind of take it out, though. Let me see. Whoop, there we go. This is so cool. So these are some of the uh, popper, of course, heroes. The dudes that played a part in the battle. I mean, Moss Monster in Four Horsemen Popper is actually very playable. Five mana for three, six. And look at the altars. They've all signed it. So this card went all over the world to kind of reach Amsterdam as its end point. I believe, Kylie, you live in Canada. And there were some people in there that live in the States. I know Jun Edik lives in, um, is it Norway? I believe it's Norway or maybe it's Sweden. Sorry, Jun, if I'm mixing it up. Um... Anyway, so this, 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 these cards went places. Very, very cool. Ornithopter. Oh, wow. We got an Ornithopter. And we have, oh, yeah, this is what I like. More signed cards. Scarewood Goblins. Look at those eyes on the Goblin. That is pretty sweet. Again, you know, these, whenever I open these mill days, it gives me an opportunity, opportunity to kind of look at the art again. And uh, I know that this with the eyes has been added, but it's really, really cool art. I love the colors, the whole color scheme of this piece of art. Absolutely cool. Yeah, Ron Spencer. Very, very, very cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kylie. And of course, the whole group. I really, really appreciate it. I kind of, you know, it, 
I know this kind of sounds sappy, but when people say thank you for something, it really motivates you to continue doing it. And, and, and organizing these tournaments for the patrons and channel members has really been a blast. It's a great way to say thank you to all of you for supporting the channel financially, which, which is really a big deal. So thank you guys. Uh, this is gonna have a special place in my binder. And also, thank you all for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.